Okay, Sean, so we've talked about the American increase in budget. The 60 million is going to come over. We talked about the UK spending more and increasing the budget. Uh, that money sort of goes around in circles to the various contractors uh, that get the work. Uh, it seems to me, or I'll put it to you, that whatever the outcome in Ukraine, Ukraine's going to lose. Yeah, what do you mean by lose, though? That's an interesting... Um, because I've, I've often wondered about the metric of winning and losing. Yeah, Winning for Russia is taking the whole of Ukraine. Winning for Ukraine is liberating all of its country. Yeah. Okay, so if Russia win, then I think it's pretty obvious. Yeah. If Ukraine win, uh, it will have been very, very expensive for them in every sense. Possibly Zelensky's own political career, but infrastructurally, you know, really bad. Uh, to pay back, as we've heard a number of commentators say, including Robert Kennedy Jr., uh, they're going to have to sell off everything. I heard a thing the other day that it's all gone anyway, but they're going to have to sell off their greatest assets, which they've spent centuries and lots of blood actually protecting. So it doesn't look good. Maybe I got it wrong. No, and I think um, I, I'm maybe not quite so doomed myself, but I do think that the it's been interesting this week. 60 billion, everywhere's gone. Thank God for that. You know, finally, it's the, you know, the, the um, victory is insightful, Ukraine, you know. Mm. And you go, actually, I'm not so sure. Mm. Mm. They've, they've lost ground as a result of this delay. They've lost lives because they've been on the back foot. They've had to vacate defensive positions. Russia has momentum, has confidence. All of a sudden, you go, how are they going to reverse that? And even if they did, it was a year ago when we were waiting for the spring offensive to start. Ukraine had been given loads of weapons. Had been There was such hope in the air that they were going to sweep Russia back. Six months later, the front lines hadn't moved. Now, we start this year without the weapons and with Ukraine on the back foot. That feels a much more difficult set of circumstances for Ukraine to navigate any time soon and i'm not entirely sure mm. this feast and famine we have the potential change of administration in the us we've talked about the fact that our defense industrial strategy isn't creating weapons and i was really struck the other day when zelensky who clearly is a master of all this stuff said you in the west have the power to stop this war you just haven't got the resolve to do it at the moment. And he used political language because he said, I know I'm not a NATO country, neither is Israel. Yet when Iran piled 330 odd missiles at Iran, the international community rushed to the aid and actually started shooting them down and actually got involved. He said, why can't you do the same for me? I'm being attacked. And bluntly, if the West was to spin up its defence industrial base, it's got literally orders of magnitude greater potential to provide weapons. If it was to put boots on the ground, if it was to set up a no-fly zone, it would stop Russia in its tracks. Mm. There must be a reason, Sean. And the reason is because of the threatening rhetoric of Lavrov and Putin that keeps rattling the nuclear sabre. Mm. And it feels like the school bully in a schoolyard because even Russia's own nuclear policy does not allow it to use nuclear weapons on overseas soils. Mm. It's only if Russia mm. itself is threatened. Russia started this war by invading Ukraine. Yeah. Russia is responsible for everything that happens as a result of that. And there's something morally right about going in to protect Ukraine that although, and, and Putin was astute enough to know that if the West was to get involved, he wouldn't have a chance. So he's mm. got to keep threatening the West. And so far, it has worked. Mm. Well, um, the West has managed to engage in a conflict which will deplete Putin's resources significantly without them firing a single bullet. One of the um, reasons why I've heard many commentators talk about the reason that we're not on the brink of World War Three is that Russia has been so badly mauled. In fact, mm. I recently heard some very senior folks talking about this, saying Russia's been badly mauled. It's been exposed to not having a very capable military at all. And it's spending 40% of its 
national spending now on defence. That is not sustainable in the longer term. It suffered huge casualties, people fleeing the country. Uh, it's a pariah on the world stage. That actually, whatever outcome comes from this, Russia will be in, in, in worse off as a result of it. The problem is, is that the metrics of success for Putin are almost certainly securing the Donbass, the land bridge and Crimea. And I think he's still pinning his hopes on a change of administration in America, Trump and him sitting in a room. Um, President Zelensky, can you wait outside, please? Um, Trump and Putin trying to argue how this mm. gets resolved. Mm. Uh, and I think that's that's a dreadful outcome, but it might well draw the war to a close, having mm. carved off some of Ukraine. Um, yeah. He goes to his May Day parade, brings home some, some big prizes. Maybe he's happy. But it does, It certainly feels at the moment as if Ukraine is in a worse position than it was at this time last mm. year. Mm. And that is worrying because Russia has got itself on a sustainable war footing. People, ammunition, money. Mm. Mm. Ukraine has not got that. And that's a massive worry, not only for um, what happens to the West, because an emboldened Putin in 10 years' time could do all sorts of stuff. What does China take from all of this if it's thinking about going into Taiwan? Mm. If it sees Putin prevail and it sees the West just keep rolling yeah. back? Yeah, quite. Um, Everybody's watching, yes. Yeah. Mm. And I'll tell you something else I just realised, Sean. Uh oh You know? I'm not wearing my 50-year-old leather bomber jacket no. for the first time. What's that? Uh, it's in the cupboard. You, you like to change the look each time. I'm trying to shift it up a bit. Mix it up. 